Well, good morning. As Amy mentioned, we have a little special, special guest today. Uh, he's going to be here Tuesday night uh, for our uh, missions prayer time, our interceding voices. And uh, he shouldn't be any stranger to many of you because Ian Sabanja has been our missionary in Uganda for uh, several years and is doing a great work over there. We've taken uh, mission trips over there, so some of you have been there to visit. And Ian has been here. He's preached before. He's, uh, in fact, he comes every couple years. And, and uh, so today, Ian Sabanja is going to be preaching. Now, Robert was supposed to be introducing him. Robert's our missions pastor, and, uh, but he got sick Friday and uh, he's still pretty bad. Uh, I got sick Monday, and I'm better. Uh, so I'm better than Robert. So I just wanted to let you know that. You can, all, you can tell him that. Don't tell him the context, okay? Just said, Gene said he was better than you are. Uh, but uh, at least I think I'm feeling a little bit better than he is. So uh, I, I won't be, I'll be out in the lobby after, after uh, worship today and be glad to greet you, but I'll keep my hands in my pockets uh, so I won't uh, infect anybody. But there's a lot of this going around, I know that. And so uh, uh, keep Robert in, in your prayers. And, and uh, Ashley came down, our, our senior, pa senior, uh, senior, uh, senior high, high pastor came down with strep throat yesterday. So it's kind of decimating our staff as well. So Ian, would you come and uh, proclaim God's word to us as well? Let's just bow in prayer. Go ahead. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you that Ian could be here. We thank you for the safe trip, for bringing him from Uganda. We thank you for the great work that he's doing there. And just ask your blessing upon him today as he shares your word with us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Thank you, Pastor Jim. What a blessing to be in the United States of America under uh, Mr. Donald Trump, a new president. Uh, people, people have been telling me in my country, what is America like under Mr. Trump? I, I told them, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, uh, I, I really I bring you greetings from uh, my country, Uganda. It's, uh, it's a blessing to be here once again. It's a, it's a great blessing, you know, because every time I come to this country, you know, something good happens to me, to my whole life, and to all my whole ministry over there in, in my country, in Uganda. And I want to bring you greetings uh, from my family, from my wife. Uh, she was, uh, some of you, I sent an email probably. I don't know whether you saw the information, but she got bitten by a snake, like in, uh, yeah, about, about two years ago but she survived the bite. So she's good and she's fine. She's uh, well and jumping and she sends her greetings to you people in Valley View. Praise God. So I wanna say that um, um, I wanna congratulate you for everything that God is doing in your life, uh, you know, for the new year. Happy new year. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God is gracious. I'm going to be sharing from the Word of God, um, um, from the book of John, and I want, to, I want to say to you, thank you very much for, you know, standing with us in, uh, in my country, in the ministry. A lot of things are being done, are happening because, because of your love and your, and your support, and we want to say thank you very much, and uh, we are praying with you in my country. We are standing with you. I, I feel like America is, my, is like my second country uh, uh, from Uganda, which is my mother country. So I have been praying for America for over 10 years, interceding and praying to see that revival takes place. And uh, hey, I'm, I'm here to tell you today that uh, things are going to happen for USA. God is doing something great for USA in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, you will uh, bear with me. It's like almost culture in my country. Again and again we say hallelujah and people say amen. <laughs> I realize people in, the, in America are very quiet and reserved. 
Halleluja. <laughs> Amen. I'm reading from the book of John, the gospel of uh, St. John, chapter 6. And uh, our, 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 our heading today is about, the, about Jesus being the, the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life. The book of John, chapter 6, and verses 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw, the, they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So I, 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 I got, you know, I got captured by this, uh, this verse that people followed Jesus because they saw the miracles that he did on them who were diseased. So I can see that Jesus actually is a healer. He, he, he performed miracles on people who were diseased, healed them, and delivered them out of their bondages, out of their sicknesses. I am not ashamed to tell you this morning that I believe that the same Jesus who was in the Bible days is the same Jesus that we have today. The same Jesus can perform miracles for you whenever you need them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. People followed Jesus because of the miracles that he did. You, you, you don't follow somebody for nothing. You have to follow somebody if you're going to get something. Praise God. So they were following Jesus because they saw the miracles that he performed. That means that he, Jesus, had something that they needed. They needed something and the multitudes followed him and he performed miracles. He healed them. So I want to tell you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that the Lord that we believe in and the Lord that we follow is also a healer, and he provides for all our needs. Praise God. Um, a woman, we had a testimony in my country when uh, we were in a worship service, and um, she gave us a testimony. She said, we were deep in worship. It is amazing to worship God. We were deep in worship, and, you know, and she, she said she saw a vision. That's what she called it, that... As we were deep in worship, she saw somebody descending from, from above and um, said to her, she, this woman was suffering from cancer. Her, her bones had been operated on for several times. You know, she had sold everything she had, including her own house. And she had also to go to, to another country for better medication. In the in next country to us is Kenya. She went to Nairobi, the capital city. She had to have uh, treatment. She, she spent everything she had. But after all that, when we were in the worship service, she said she had this visitation from, from the Lord, supernatural. And then she said that somebody told her that all your troubles are gone. And uh, from that day, this woman started experiencing a um, physical difference in her life. Today, as I left my country, she's a free woman. She's uh, jumping, running around, and doing all her work. And she's uh, becoming better and better and better every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Who can do that? Jesus. Only Jesus can do that. Multitudes followed him because they saw the miracles that he performed on them who were diseased. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Jesus, who is the healer. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the healer. And he, he, Jesus is also our provider. Brothers and sisters, he's also our provider. When we go in the same chapter, chapter 6 and, and verses 5, it says, When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he says unto Philip, where shall we buy bread that they may eat? And he said to prove this to him, for he knew himself what he would do. But then Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may eat a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here. He has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. 
that there, might, there was much grass in that place. So the men sat down in a number of about 5,000. That's not a small number. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise all the fish as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of five barley of loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Praise the name of the living God. And then they said, these men said, those men said, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, they said, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I'm also introducing to you Jesus, who is our provider. Hallelujah. He will, Jesus will use only five loaves of bread and two fish to provide for 5,000 men. And my teacher in the Bible school told me that in the Bible days, every time they mentioned 5,000 men, 5, men, that means that there are many more women than men. Usually they, 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 they mentioned men, but there were also many more women. But Jesus used only the five, five loaves of bread and two fish to provide for 5,000 men. Jesus is also our provider. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look to him, when we put our trust in him, Jesus will provide everything that we need in life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 9, if you will take notice that um, Jesus is, um, number, verse number 9 says, he said, Andrew said, there is a lad here. He has five loaves of bread and two small fish. Two small fish. Five loaves of bread and two small fish. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the small thing that you have, which you may despise in your eyes, God will use to multiply and do greater miracles in your life. Amen? There were only five loaves of bread and two fish, but that was enough for Jesus to perform a miracle, to multiply and, and provide for his people. I remember um, way back when the Lord led us, me and my wife, to leave our capital, the capital city, Kampala. Kampala is the major city in Uganda. When the Lord led us to leave that city and get, go down into the, into, into, into the bush where he was sending us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we, we, we obeyed. I mean, we had nothing, but the only thing that we had was our heart, and we obeyed. We said, yes, Lord, whatever you say to us, we will go. We obeyed, and um, we went to that area, and we started preaching. As I, some of you, you know, you have my testimony. I have been telling you over the years that there were, there were several Islamic people in that area, many witch doctors, a lot of sorcery, and witchcraft in that region. But when the Lord sent us there, and we, we started to preach the gospel, of Jesus Christ, and we started intercessory prayer. I tell you, beloved, prayer is powerful. Prayer breaks down principalities and powers. Prayer brings a difference in the, in the, in the heavenly realm. We started to pray and speak about the word of God in that region, and I want to tell you, I have good news to you today, that the level of witchcraft, witchcraft has taught, has, has, has tremendously gone down in that region. P Amen. Praise God. People's minds have been transformed dramatically in a, in a powerful way. Now, even the people who do not believe that Jesus is their personal savior, but somehow they have been touched by the presence of the almighty God. As I speak of now, people, everybody at least acknowledges that the God of the Bible is a true God. Hallelujah. This is what happens when people obey the Lord and, 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 um, and take his word 
as the food of life, the bread of life, and act upon his ways. That is what happened. Um, people's minds get transformed. The young generation is being affected in this region. Praise God. As you've seen in the pictures over the years, I've been coming in the past years to this church, and I've been sharing with you. God has given us the grace to, to, to start a, a powerful Christian school, which is very effective now in, in my country. Praise God. We have, we have over 300 children, and we are you know, planting the seed of Jesus Christ in their hearts. And, and they are also acting as evangelists to win their, their parents. Hallelujah. It is, it is wonderful. And I, 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 have, I have the good news to tell you. Maybe the next time I'll, I'll bring you a, a video. When I went last year, 2016, I, was, I, was, I got invited to go preach in India. India to the... Oh, something is happening to my mic. Uh, excuse me, I'm not used to this American stuff. <laughs> Forgive me, hallelujah. Amen. You know, last, last year, let me see, yeah, 2016, I got an opportunity. A man in India invited me, a pastor, he invited me to go preach the gospel in India to the Hindu people. They, my, they have millions and millions of gods. They are very different from you, from the Americans. Everywhere you go, there's a different God in India. Every shop you go, every shopping mall you go, there's a different God of another style, figure. Every kind of God is there. They are worshiping idols like, like no man's business. Oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had, you know what? It, I, had a, I had difficulty even getting the visa to go to India because my passport says I am a preacher. So when I went to the embassy in Kampala to get the Indian visa to go to India, I had problems because the embassy did not want me to go to preach to the Indian people. So I told them I am going to do business and I'm a tourist. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. The, the, <laughs> the Bible says, be as humble as doves and as wise as serpents. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, I was going to do my father's business. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. So they gave me the visa. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and I went ahead and I, I had eight meetings in India. Praise the Lord. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere I had an opportunity. So, but hey, listen to me, beloved. This is all happening because of you. You are our partners. You have been our support and you have loved us and you have prayed for us, and you have, you know, you have done everything that is possible to see that the gospel is being preached. So I'm glad to tell you, you guys are not only affecting Uganda, but India as well, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. Hey, listen to me. We also have a radio program. We are also preaching on the radio in Uganda. As some of you are already informed, we have a weekly radio program where we preach to the whole nation, 30 means program, on a weekly basis. People are hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank God so much. Hallelujah. In the, when we continue in, in John chapter 6, John chapter 6, and I want to read now in verse 49. Verse 49. He says, Your, um, he says, Your fathers did eat men now in the wilderness, and they are dead. This is, but this is the bread which comes down from heaven, but a man may eat thereof and, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. So the bread, Jesus Christ is himself is the, is the real bread of life. Even if people are busy, you know, running after things, perishable things, tangible things, material things, which perish. You know, our fathers, you remember our fathers in the desert, they ate, they ate the, the manna and today they are dead. They, Jesus said they are dead. 
But the bread of life, the true bread of life is Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. When you, when you have Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, when you have Jesus, you have everything. You, when you have Jesus, Jesus is the real bread. Jesus is the real food. Everything is in Jesus. Amen? Everything is in Jesus. That's the reason why he said in, in John chapter 6. Let, let, let's see um, John chapter 6 and verses 48. Let's see what, what he says about himself. 48, he says, ah, I'm the bread of life. Yes. Verse, let, actually, let's go to verse 57. Um, yeah. Verse 55, excuse me. He says, For my flesh is, is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh, oh my God, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. Hallelujah. He shall live. Jesus says his, 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 his flesh is, is food indeed. And his blood is drink indeed. So the flesh and blood of Jesus is actually everything that Jesus is. His word, his teachings, um, his, his spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, if we walk by that, that secret in life, Jesus is the answer to life. A lot of people, I see a lot of people in my country are seeking this and that and that in various ways. But we try to tell them that Jesus Christ is the answer. He's the answer to everything that we will ever need. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters in America, that Jesus is everything because he came to the point where he said, my flesh is Food indeed. And, and, and my, my, my blood is drink indeed. That means that everything that Jesus is, we need everything that he is. That, that's, the, that's the thing that gives us life and success in this life. Praise God. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It does not. It doesn't profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. I don't want to touch anything that will destroy my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't mind if you, whatever you offer or you, you know, I, I, I have told the people in my country, even if you give me this, like, this whole auditorium, you know, full of dollars and everything, English pounds or whatever you can think of, but if it is going to take me away from my relationship with the Almighty God, I don't want to touch it because actually it is nothing. Hallelujah. The presence of God is all what matters. It's the best. When you have Jesus, you have everything. You have everything in life. Praise God. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that hold firm on uh, what you have taken to believe in your life, Jesus Christ. He has everything that we will ever need in this life. Praise God. I want also to take this opportunity, beloved, um, to proclaim to you that um, right now in my country, we, um, we, are, we have a plan. We are planning to construct um, a church, children's church, because where our children go for worship, you know, separately, it is almost collapsing. The thing is going down. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's kind of a, 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 it was a temporary structure that we made for them where they can go for church. But right now it is down. It's going down. It's very old. So we are believing God to, to put up, to erect a church, a children's church, which is just next to our adult church. And uh, on that building, we want to put on the next level, want to put uh, um, want to put the, the ladies ladies activities and the youth activities, you know, so on and so forth like that. But um, I just wanted to uh, to mention to you that this is one of the projects that we are 
uh, believing God for, to see it happening. And the, the children in my country, they have been praying and interceding. They tell me, when I go to their church, they, t- they tell me, they, we are praying and interceding that God will provide for us a new church. Because what, where they go for church now, the thing is almost broken. It's rotten and broken. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I put forward to you that request and a prayer request. And if the Lord leads you in any way to stand with us in a, in a special way, is uh, very, very much welcome in Jesus' name. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to help in any way, as many of you know, you may write a check in the names of Valley View Christian Church, and then you can attach a note, show that uh, it goes to uh, Uganda, Ian Sebanja, or Bukoloto Christian Faith Center, and I'm sure that the administration in this church will uh, forward it to us so that we can uh, be able to erect the children's church in Uganda, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I know that we, together we can do a lot. I, I have studied the termites in my country. The termites, amen, they carry something very small, but after, after, after a while, they make a big ant hill. The termites, you know, they can be a problem when they, when they come for your poles at your house, but, but when they build their house, it's amazing. Hallelujah. Each one of them carries something very, just a tiny bit, a tiny bit. But then afterwards, it makes the whole big anthill. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, don't despise anything that God can enable you to, you know, to contribute towards this project. I'm sure that it will be a great, great blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is gracious. Amen, amen. God is good. I want to, um, I want to, uh, uh, also, my brother Robert Peterson is not here. It's, uh, it is sad, but, uh, you know, Robert Peterson has brought a group to country, to my country, Uganda. Robert Peterson, uh, Jerry Ballinger, Ellen Ballinger, uh, uh, a few men, Mike McGuire, and uh, there, there's a, there a few people have come to Uganda. But hey, I want to make another welcome in Jesus' name. You guys are welcome to come to Uganda and, uh, you know, pay a, vi- a missionary visit a week or two weeks or something. You know, whatever the Lord puts, lays on your heart. You're welcome to come and visit and see what we are doing. We have, done, we have, uh, we have actually done a lot of, um, uh, we have advanced many things. Even, even Robert himself, Peterson, if he comes now, he will be surprised. We have done a lot of things ever since you last came. So... I want to invite every one of you to come and see, you know, what we are doing in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And above all, I want you to remember that you have your brothers and sisters in Uganda, East Africa, who are praying, interceding for you and standing with you in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to, um, uh, to pray together before, um, before we finish this session in, in the name of Jesus Christ. And... Um, Hallelujah. If you would like to stand with me, please, uh, you, you will stand with me and um, we will uh, say a prayer together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much. We thank you, Father, this morning. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to share the word of God and, and to share what is taking place in, uh, in my country, in Uganda, Father. I thank you for Valley View Christian Church, Lord God. I thank you for the, for the, for the love and for the, for the partnership. I thank you, Father. We thank you for the oneness, Lord. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for every man and woman, Lord, that you will meet us at the point of our need, Heavenly Father. Those who came who are sick, tormented or oppressed in any way, Lord. We are asking, Lord, for your provision. As the people followed you, Jesus, whenever they saw the miracles that you performed on them who were diseased, they followed you, Lord, and you delivered them. You healed them, Lord. And today, in Jesus' name, Father, we are asking you, Lord, we want to see uh, your miracles happening in our midst, Lord God Almighty. 
We know you as a healer. You are the healer, Lord God Almighty. And also, Lord, we know you as the provider. You, you provided to 5,000 men out of five loaves of bread and two fish, Father God. You did it, Lord God Almighty. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you in Jesus' name, let there be a miracle of provision today, O oh God Almighty. May you provide for each and every woman in this place, Lord God Almighty. We thank you, Father. Father, I'm, I'm praying and I'm asking you, Lord, that you will, um, Father, bless this church in a bigger way, O oh God Almighty. That they will move from one level to another, Heavenly Father. From glory to glory, Father, for your purposes, for the purposes of your glory and your kingdom. I thank you, Father. I give you praise for the pastor in your church and all the pastors in this congregation. Thank you for the men and the women. Thank you for the children. Thank you for all the youth of oh God Almighty. We give you praise. I thank you for the peace in the United States of America. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. I have, I have a table in the back if you want to see some of the things that we are doing. And if you want to put down your name for a, a, a newsletter, you are welcome to do so. I also brought along with me a few books. I wrote a book on fasting. If you want a copy, you can pick one at a fee which you will see at the table. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ian.